So uh, we left off at um, um, the middle of chapter two yesterday. So we're just going to review the debit and credit rules, and then we'll move forward to uh, the, the slides after uh, in the recording process. So as I was saying yesterday, the recording process is critical to bookkeeping, and that means that it is critical to understand accounting. Um, the debit and credit rules must be um, used at all times. You have to remember that assets for assets, debits go up, credits go down. For liabilities, debits go down, credits go up. And for equities, uh, at this point, they are broken up into four categories. You've got the owner's capital, where credits go up, debits go down. You've got the, the drawings, owner's drawings, where debits go up, credits go down. And then you have revenues and expenses. In revenues, credits go up, debits go down. Expenses, debits go up, credits go down. So if you understand these or memorize these for future, it will be really helpful for you to do all the journal entries and do all the bookkeeping necessary to come to financial statements. So um, after this small review, I'm going to move to um, journal entries. And we did this journal entry yesterday where the person purchased a truck for $14,000. So we debited truck for 14 and credited cash for 14. Journal entries will rarely be this simple. Of course, you know, there will be some simple transactions, but most of them will be a bit more complicated. So one of the more complicated transactions would look like uh, a compound journal entry where we have two, more than two accounts being affected. So three, four, five accounts are being affected in one transaction. Uh, in this case, you have um, uh, three accounts that are being affected, truck, cash, and notes payable. At this point, note payable is the same as accounts payable. As we move along the course, we will differentiate it between, uh, we, there will be differences between notes payable and accounts payable. Uh, so in this transaction, a truck is being purchased for 34,000. However, we are paying cash, uh, we're only paying $8,000 cash. So that means ca a credit to cash is only for $8,000 and the rest we will pay later. A note payable is a is a is an IOU. So the company owes them um, twenty six thousand dollars, which they will pay at a later date. So that's why you see you credit notes payable. But again, notice debits equal credits, and notice the account equation, assets equals liabilities and equities, is still in balance. So what happens once we do all these journal entries in, in the journal? we move on to what we call the ledger. The ledger is basically, basically, it's a group of T accounts. It is all the T accounts of all the, trans, of all the accounts in one place. So a journal gives you, um, a journal gives you a history of what is happening financial, with financial transactions. A ledger gives you perspective on each account individually. So you can look at the cash ledger and see what kind of transactions happen under cash. Then you can look at the inventory ledger and see what kind of transactions happen under the inventory. You, then you can look at the, uh, the ledger for bank loan and look at all the transactions that are happening under the bank loan. So ledgers are simply a group of T accounts gathered together for all the transactions that have occurred. So you, what you do is you move information from the journal to the ledger. You do this in order for you to understand the impact on each separate account. Um, this process is called posting. This process of moving from journal to the ledger is called the posting process. Usually with the advent of the software, uh, bookkeeping softwares around the world, this posting has become really irrelevant because what you do is you enter the journal uh, entry into the system and it posts for you. Okay? However, just as a basis of background information, you should understand what is behind the posting. So basically, you're taking an, uh, each part of the journal entry and you're posting it to its relevant <coughs> account. So in this case, you have cash and you have capital and you have um, the, the, journal, the ledger at the bottom, which is ca uh, cash. So you're taking the cash transaction and you're putting it into the ledger uh, at the bottom of this slide, which is again the cash ledger. As I said, this is called posting. It has become somewhat 
irrelevant with the, with the software coming into play, but you should understand what is happening from the journal to the ledger. What happens after the ledger? So you've got the journal, you've got the ledger now, which is a collection of T accounts. You move all that information from the ledger to what we call the trial balance. A trial balance is simply a trial balance. It is where you are trying to balance all your accounts uh, for, so you can use that information to present in financial statements. So a trial balance is basically a list of accounts that gives you balances of all uh, the ending balances of all those accounts. Okay? These are ending balances of all these accounts which include balance sheet accounts and includes income statement accounts and they also include the equities accounts. So what you do is you, you list all the accounts on one side and you put debits and credits on the other side um, and you put all the balances of debits under the debit column and you put all the balances of credits under the credits column. So an example of a trial balance looks exactly like this, where you've got um, you know, debits and credits and you've got uh, a listing of accounts. You notice the list of accounts is usually in, an, uh, in a specific order. It doesn't have to follow this order, but it's usually in this order. And the order is that you've got the balance sheet accounts on the top and you've got the income statement accounts at the bottom. So you can see your cash and supplies and insurance exp uh, things are at the top in this example and you've got your service revenue and expenses at the bottom. So this is just a way of presenting. It is not a required way of presenting trial balance. A trial balance is not a financial statement. It is simply a trial balance. You use information from here to move to trial balance. However, a trial balance, just like anything else, has a few weaknesses. Okay. The first one being that you will not be able to catch certain errors, such as if you never recorded the journal entry. If you've never recorded either the debit or the credit, the debits and credits still balance with the rest that you've recorded, right? So trial balance will balance. So it will not show you a mistake such as where you have missed a journal entry. Um, it will also not show you any mistake if you have not posted it. So if you just put in the journal entry but did not post it, the ledger accounts are still balanced. So it will not show you that mistake or that error. So there are some drawbacks to this trial balance, but the main concern for trial balance is to prove that all your debits equal all your credits. So if you go back to that sample, you see that, that debits and credits are equal at the end. And that is what you're trying to prove. You're trying to prove that all your accounts are in balance and the equation, the accounting equation, assets equals liabilities and equities, stale balances at the end of trial balance. Um, so I'm just going to give you a few journal entries as examples to refer back to when you are doing questions for your assignments or preparing for tests. Um, and these are just sample journal entries. If you have a question about these, we can definitely look at that later. Um, however, at this point, just go through them and see if this makes sense to you. So the first slide shows you four journal entries. The first one says, MM Clinic buys furniture for $10,000 cash. You've got debit furniture, you've got credit cash. Both furniture and cash are assets. So one has gone up, the other has gone down. The equation is still in balance. Another example is, MM Clinic borrows $15,000 from the bank account, or from the, from the bank. Debit cash, $15,000, which is an asset, so it has gone up. Credit bank loan, which is a liability, it has also gone up. So you can see the, the assets equals liabilities and equities is still in balance, and debits equal credits. Third entry, you can see MM Clinic buys computers for $7,000 on credit. So you've got debit computers, $7,000, asset has gone up, credit accounts payable, $7,000, liabilities has gone up. So again, the debits still equal credits and the uh, assets equal liabilities and equities. In the last transaction on this slide, you've, you, you can see MM Clinic receives their internet bill of $200 and then pays it a few days later. 
So this is a bit more complicated situation. You've got two journal entries for this. You've got debit internet, which is $200. Credit accounts payable, that means you'll pay them later, $200. So again, your expense has gone up and your liabilities has gone up. And then you take debits, so you, then you debit accounts payable, $200 and credit cash, $200. Your liabilities has gone down and so have your assets. So at the end, you still balance. Yeah? And then there's a few more general entries that I, as I said, and then, uh, you can use these to review or to refer back to when you are doing questions as far as assignments and projects and tests are related. So I leave this for you to review and hopefully uh, this uh, uh, discussion uh, has made sense to you with regards to the recording process and hopefully you'll review this on your own time a bit more as well. Thank you.